I want to talk about love. I think love is something that we as humans all want or have wanted at some point in our lives. Maybe even had it at some certain point in the life. You had that dream girl, you had that dream relationship, but maybe things didn't go so well. Or maybe you've never been in a relationship. You see, some people might even be going through their lone wolf phase where they had a relationship, didn't go well, and they kind of just go around, ah, oh, I'm a lone wolf for everything, I'm just going to focus on work, which I did go through at some point. I recently read a book, and it's called The Eight Rules of Love. It's from uh, the author, who Jay Shetty, who is a monk, who had studied quite a few years on this. So I just thought I'd give it a read and kind of tell my thoughts about it to you guys. It might give you a new, fresh perspective on love and might help you in your current situation. My name is Wada, and I hope other young men like me take back control of their lives. Rule 1. Be alone. I think that this is one thing that we are really all terrified of. Being alone. Humans are biologically social animals. We are social people. Sometimes we'll even stay in a really, really bad relationship for a long period of time just because we're afraid of being alone. We feel that if we are alone, that we are trapped off from the idea of love that we won't be able to achieve it because we're alone. But if you think about it, if you actually decide to be alone for a bit, you decide to go on your path, your purpose, to find out what it is that you want to do in life, your strengths, your weaknesses, your insecurities, and you get used to them and you improve on them, and then you're in a relationship, how good do you think that relationship would be compared to someone who's afraid of being alone? A relationship well, it's like that cringy thing that people say. How can you love someone if you can't even love being by yourself? Learning to enjoy your own alone time and actually love being by yourself without being scared of being alone. Learning that first and then incorporating the strengths that you've learned from it into a relationship, that is probably one of the best things that you can do. Now, rule two is deal with your karma. We are influenced by a lot of things. If you think about how many things in your daily life influence you, your friends, school, family, social media, there are so many things that will implement, influence, influence you and how you think and how you act towards others. Now, this is what's known as karma, whether how you act towards others gets you a good karma or a bad karma, that depends on you. Now, that's what I would do first. Before getting into a relationship, I would take a look at my own behaviors and how people react to them. Basically, identify whether you're or not you're a dick. How do you act like this? Why do you act like this? What is influencing you to act like this? I think social media is a big one that influences a lot of people. I mean, some of the people that I've encountered that have said the most stupidest or offensive or just kind of genuinely just stupid shit from social media and then like caused problems in relationships because of it. Rule three, define love before you achieve it. I think this is one that a lot of people kind of neglect. I did. When getting into a relationship, a lot of people don't really identify what it is that they, they define as love. Some people want long relationships. Some people want short relationships. For me, if I'm getting into a relationship, I want it to be worthwhile. I want it to be long. I want to see an end goal years down the line, right? Something that aligns with my purpose and my goals. Someone who can help me with doing all of this for you guys and that I can help them with their own goals. Now, there was one time I got into a relationship where I didn't state what it is that I wanted. And then it was like a couple months went by and then she kind of wanted a short, like short-term relationship and I was thinking of long-term and we were like, oh, well, this is awkward. <laughs> You need to find out what your definition of love is, what it is that you want, because if you don't, and then you get into a relationship and that person wants different things or it just doesn't work out, you're gonna end up with needless heartbreak and it's gonna make you terrified to fall in love again. According to the book uh, from Jay Shetty, the monk, says that you love someone when you like their personality and you respect their values and you wanna keep them, wait, keep them, you wanna help them reach their goals. Sorry, I can't read. Rule four, 
Your partner is your guru. The definition of a guru is someone who teaches you and supports you without controlling you. Look at your partner if you are in a relationship as if they are your guru, as someone you can learn a lot from. That's weird to say. Like, imagine staring at you like your significant other and being like, <laughs> "You're my guru." <laughs> it's, it's essentially you guys can learn a lot from each other. For example, one of my relationships, they learned a lot from what I was doing. They learned a lot about YouTube, and then with them, I learned a lot about dogs because. I didn't really know much about dogs and they knew a fuck ton for some reason. <laughs> but now I do. Rule five, your purpose sets the tone. When you find out what your purpose is and you live accordance to it, life becomes a lot more fulfilled. Now, my purpose here is to help others who are like me, sharing my experiences that I've learned from being on self-improvement so you guys can avoid the same mistakes that I made. Now, some relationships I've had were in 100% support of this and then some weren't. Obviously, you can probably tell which relationships lasted longer. Your purpose is important. Don't neglect yourself, your physical health, nor your mental health for someone else. Rule six, win or lose together. Now, I think a huge problem that I've had, especially in like my longest ever relationship, it was like two years, I think. I think the longest, the biggest problem that came out of it was arguments. Couples argue all the time, right? It is normal. It is normal for couples to argue a lot. Now, I want you to sort of envision the argument slightly different. Not as you against them, but as you both against a certain problem. If one of you loses, you both lose anyway. Doesn't matter. Literally, just by thinking this helped me really help with arguments. Instead of like the idea that I have to win and you have to lose. It's both of us against a problem, so we should both try and help each other overcome that problem, rather than this win-lose situation, because even if I win, and even if you lose, it doesn't matter, I still lose, because you'll still be pissed at me. And ultimately, it kind of actually distanced you both. And then rule seven and rule eight, these last two are kind of specifically directed for breakups. And the time comes to an end, when things go wrong, and you're depressed and sad, and a soppy sack of shit. Yeah, yeah, breakups suck. Rule seven, the end of a relationship is not the end of you. Look, the end of a relationship can really suck. It can be really, really hard. And sometimes you feel like, oh, I'm never gonna fall in love again. I'm never gonna go into another relationship. It's probably the worst thinking you can have. Yes, this relationship is over, but that doesn't mean it's the end of you that you aren't deserving of another relationship ever, ever again. It's a bit dramatic. It's a bit cruel and harsh on yourself. The best thing to do is to be able to look at the good things that came out of the relationship, the important things that you've learned from it, and the things that you could have changed, mistakes that were made. Basically, all is a learning curve for that next relationship. And then rule eight, try again. Look, I think one of the best things that helped me uh, in one of my recent breakups, we just didn't really get along. So we both, it was a mutual, we both split it and it kind of sucked. You know, I it was after a couple of months and even though it was both mutual, it still hurt, it sucked a lot. So I went through rule seven, uh, thought about all the good things, wrote down the reasons why I'm glad we broke up and what I can learn for the next one. I still have it written down in my book somewhere. And then the best thing that helped me was try again. When you think you're not ready to try again, go out and try again. But not just, I don't mean just try again with another relationship. I mean try again with loving other people, loving your family, loving friends. When you break up, that is the best time to spend more time with friends because they genuinely help you with the process. Just kind of not thinking about it and then realizing that there are other aspects to life which are still great other aspects of life that you can love still. Your family, your friends. This isn't sort of the usual video that I would do. It feels weird like talking about relationships because I'm quite fortunate I've had a decent amount of experience and I've read a lot of books and stuff. So, but I just never, I don't really ever talk about this in my on my channel. So it's kind of like, it's weird. It feels weird, but um, yeah, I thought I'd, re I'd just give it a shot, and uh, I really enjoyed the book that I read from Jay Shetty. I really recommend it. It's called The Eight Rules of Love. It's a great read as well. Look, I hope things have been alright, and I hope this video helped you out. It's starting to get sunny now. I think it's getting up to... Uh, it's getting
getting up to seven o'clock now. Huh? Sun's coming out. It's quite nice. I hope this video helped you out. And I'd be really appreciated if you click the one that's going to pop up in the corner here. Because this video could help you out as well. And subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Stay consistent and do the best you can. You know what time it is? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Self-improvement kiss. Mwah.